In this video, we will continue with the configuration of our RTU uh, with SICAM Device Manager. We will focus now on the configuration of signals to and from binary input and output modules. So basically, this was the example that we are configuring and we have conventional wiring from the Bay 1 to the RTU. So we must consider our RTU and the input output modules, uh, the binary input output that we will wire. This is the mapping of the process to the RTU. So it will be installed in the DI module in the first two binary inputs, uh, in the in binary input seven and eight, we will have two single point signals indicating low SF6, stage one and two. In the binary inputs four and five, we will have a double point indication indicating that the disconnector, the earth disconnector Q8 is open or closed. The binary input two and three, we will have the bay disconnector Q1, also double point. And in the binary inputs zero and one, we will have the double point position indicating the status of the circuit breaker. So how do we configure that in SICAM device manager? So important here is in advance, we had configured here the binary inputs and outputs, the, the modules. So in this case, the module zero will be binary outputs and in the module one, the binary input. Now we will go back to home and then we will go to the signals dashboard in the RTU. So let's see again what we have. We are in the SICAM device manager, project TLQ, RTU CP8022, CP80, signals dashboard. We can see on the left the structure of the RTU where we see the CP, the central processing, the CPU. We can see here the peripheral group where we have two different modules, the DO and the DI that we define in the hardware definition. We see also here for the different protocols. We will focus on these two. Then in the middle, we have an area where we will assign the properties of the signals. And on the right, we have an area where we will create and manage our signals. So the first thing that we need to do is to create the signals for this RTU. This we do on the right, but we need to expand this area to work. So we will use this button on the upper right corner. If you browse on top, it says expand signal list. If I click on that, then I see this area a lot larger and I can see here space where I will create the signal. There is no signal there. I can add signals with this button. In this case, I will say I will add one signal, add. Then a signal has been created here, the full name, new signal. It assigns a common ASDU, the one that we defined at the beginning for the RTU. And then it assigns a freely, a free defined IO address. The, in 104, the information object address is defined by three bytes. These are these IOA, one, two, and three. And last but not least, the type, where we define if this is single point or double point. So we will say this will be a double point information. And for this, we, in, in this we will define, for, for example, the position of the circuit breaker. So we will write here, um, B1, Q0, position. For example, for it, this was funny, B1, posi Q0, position. So, we have, have defined this signal. Now we do the following. Let's do this complete, only this signal. I will mark the signal here. And 
on the right I will select I want to assign this signal to the binary input module that I created here I will with this button I can just collapse this signal list again so I can see a little bit more what happens in the middle now that I have marked these two I will select here the assign button so now you see that something happened this signal can be seen now in the middle and you can see that there are some areas now that are shown with this pink background color this is indicating me that something in the configuration is still missing or is incorrect I will select first processing type and I can select in this case this is a DI digital input double point information now it is still pink something is still missing I don't know what I will use this arrow here to completely collapse this part here so now I can see here more I can see there is this other column data point which has not been assigned so I can select here which is the binary input or binary input combination for this signal remember I selected this to be a double point signal so this is offering me two points in this case zero and one I can see now to the right that the information is complete I can just unmark it and this uh, data point has been completely defined I can expand again the area of the sing single point uh, uh, the signals definition and I can just expand again to have the working area complete now I need to do the same for the disconnector Q1 and the air switch Q8 you can do it like that I can just add one and rename it or so and change the type I can also show you how you can duplicate an existing signal you mark it you say I want to have two additional copies of this and I mark duplicate then automatically it copies the signals that I have marked here the, this amount of times and it changes the name automatically one and two so I must rename them Q8 and Q1 automatically it had se selected a free information object address so I don't need to take care of that and it also copied automatically the the type so I I just don't have to define this individually for this I can just uh, add now we have also two single points for the low stage uh, SF6 pressure so I will just add one signal I can select it we name it and then I can leave it a single point and I can just duplicate it one time stage 2 and then I can say that I have all my signals defined now I will collapse it here and I must assign this also to this model so just to see you can see how you can easily work with device manager I can select all the signals here I have already selected the DI I can deselect only the one that I already assigned Q0 and then I can assign all of these signals to the binary input model now I can easily I will take the two single point signals and I select here processing type for the whole column it is making an intersection between this column 
and what these lines. So basically I'm talking about these two fields. And here on top I can select, this will be digital input, single point information. And I can say field all selected, only on one step. And I can do the same for the double points. Double point, assign. Now I can, this unfortunately individually, I can select, okay, Q1 will be in the binary inputs two and three. The Q8 will be binary inputs four and five. Stage one of OSF6 will be six and seven. And that's it. I have assigned all the signals that I defined to the binary inputs. Now, there is still some definition that I can do. If I go, you see that we are in the tab assignment here. There is another tab here, parameter. In parameter, I will see the signals depending on the category. I define in a assignment, two types of assignment of a processing type, single point information, double point information. So in parameter, I also have two, single point and double point. For the double points, I could, for example, invert here the position zero, or the, position, the, the binary contact for open, I could invert it, or the binary input for close. I could also block the signal if I have some wiring problems, for example, and I don't want the signal to be shown at the moment, I could just block it and then uh, uh, the signal will not come anymore in the system. I can apply time filters for that, etc. There are a lot of parameters that you could apply to the signals. The same here for single points, you could individually invert one of the signals, for example, just by setting here inversion. All of this is possible here. Now let's add the binary outputs. So the binary outputs, we will go back to the presentation. For the binary outputs, we have here also, we need one mapping. So in this case, let's assume we will have the Bay 1, uh, the, the command, the circuit breaker open and close will be handled as a double, one pole double command. So one contact will be to open, will be the contact zero, 00, and one contact will be to close, the contact zero, 01. And the, for the disconnector Q1, we will use also one pole double command, the D02 to open, this D03 to close. So, I will go to where, where I have my, my signals again, and instead of creating them from zero, I will just select the two signals of the single points that I want to control, Q0 and Q1, and I will just duplicate them one time. And I will say, this will be, not pause, but command, so I change the name. And then for these two, I also need to change the type. The type will be 46 double command. Now these two signals, I need to map them, but now they will be mapped to the binary output module. I will just assign it here. You can see here behind, but I cannot see now, so I can collapse the whole area. And now I can see this. I need to assign first processing type for both. DC one pole, because we define this in the mapping, in what we want to do. We mark it, and then this would be command zero and one. 
and context two and three. Now, if I go to parameter, I can do even more configuration for these commands. I could, for example, define how sh long should the contact for open should last, how long should, if, if there is select before operate for the operation, I can select here a time. If I said no, zero, this would be, it would be direct execution. I could select if there will be um, a feedback expected. Of course, in this case for Q0, I can say maybe after one second, I expect to receive, before the one, one second, I, should, I expect to receive the feedback that the position has changed. And for the Q1, maybe it will take maximum 10 seconds or five seconds. And I can here, this would be the time to, for the contact close. And RS image, this is the feedback image. So I can say for the command of the circuit breaker, the expected feedback should be this Q0. And for Q1 command, this is the expected feedback. And save. That's it. That's pretty much all you have to do to configure your binary input and outputs in the SICAM 8000 RTU. So uh, we will see you in the next video where we, we continue configuring our RTU.